winter is coming, so it's not gonna be easy. We know it's our fourth winter here, so yes, we know it's gonna be hard. <laughs> but I'm sure that we will manage to go to pass uh, everything. Okay, um, just, okay, mm. okay, uh, we love animals too, that's why we made a rescue, somebody said that they love animals, we also love animals, that's why we started rescuing them, that's why we've made our organization, that why, that's why it's becoming so big, and we're rescuing more and more, we're building more and more, um, I've, uh, you have been asked on our story in, in the last days to pop a question if you are interested in our rescue and I've written them down <laughs> and I just want to answer the ones that we've uh, we've already had and if you are curious about anything else about me our life rescue the dogs if you want to know how some of the dogs that we've rescued are just pop the question here and I will reply to every single one. Uh, okay, so the first question is, have you seen an increase in dogs being dumped over four years? Um, dogs have always been dumped in Romania and dogs have always lived on the streets. So for me, growing up, I've always seen dogs hit by car, dogs with mange, dogs with um, missing limbs. So suffering is all everywhere around uh, the streets of Romania you just kind of get used to it you know I think this is the biggest shock that everybody that comes from abroad to Romania has because they come and they ex they expect it to be like it is in Germany and England no dogs or cats on the street and then you come and you see so many that you're just overwhelmed um, I think in our area so in Brasov area it's actually declined but you have to keep in mind the fact that Roma Brasov is in the middle of the country. Uh, it has an elevated status because the people here are um, more intelligent. They uh, earn more money. They are high. Uh, they are um, more inclined to um, animals and to listen and to be careful with their animals. So it's different than, for example, the south of the country or the east of the country. Yes, we do see a lot of dogs being abandoned. And now with the pandemic, it's, it's been horrible. So uh, I think March was the month that we had a spike. We would go to the shelter almost every day and there would be a dog running on the field or a dog uh, in the front of our shelter or dogs just let there on the field so that we could find them and this happened almost every single day we we were running out of capacity we were we we had no more space where we could put the dogs we have used all our foster everybody was panicking in the pandemic um people were thinking that dogs can also transmit corona um we didn't have the know-how and the knowledge that we have now so it's actually been pretty tough but overall in the last four years, I would think that it's a decline and that people, because of social media and because of all our work and because we make so many educational programs, I think they are starting to get the point, you know, that the dog and the cat, they're family members, they should live inside the house, they should get good food, good training, uh, love, unconditional love from the owner. So I think the future is bright. But I'm also an optimistic. I am an uncurable optimistic. So in 10 years, if you ask me the same question, I'm going to say the same. It's going to be better and it has to be better because what else are we fighting for if it's not? You know, why are we here? What are we doing if we're not making an impact, if we're not making a difference? Okay, uh, second question was how many dogs do we have? Uh, we are currently having around 250 dogs. We take care of 250 dogs every single day. This includes the dogs that we have um, in the kennels in the front, in the sanctuary, in the, in the open shelter. <laughs> That's what we love about you and why Romania needs you. Thank you. Thank you, Dominique. I think, I think it's really important that we are not demotivated. A lot of rescuers 
start to rescue and then they get overwhelmed because they feel that they cannot do this anymore, that it's too much for them, they, that they cannot rescue all the dogs and all the cats that they see need help. And of course, we also see this. I, I also have this feeling sometimes. And for me, the, the, the feeling that I hate most of all is feeling powerless and, and not being able to do something because I know I'm capable, I know I can do it, I know if I set my, my mind and my energy towards something, it has to be done. And when we are at full capacity, when we all actually cannot take in anymore, it feels shit. It really feels shit. And I, I would like to be able to do more, but it's, it's a, um, a thing, an, an equilibrium. You know, you have to have an equilibrium. If you, if you take on more than you can handle, you eventually get to the point where you won't be able to care for them as good as, as you should and then mistakes can happen and dogs can get sick and you can have a small epidemic in your shelter and then we don't want that, okay? We, don't, we, we are very successful in taking care of the 250 dogs together with our caretakers, our 10 caretakers that are heart and soul with the dogs every single day and the cats and they're doing an amazing job and I'm really proud of the entire team and I'm, I'm really happy that they are they're coming to the shelter every day knowing that we are not there just to clean the shit off the ground. We are there to make an impact. We are there to rescue lives. We are every single day, we are changing the dogs that we take care of, the, the, their lives. We are, we are taking them from the ditch. They are half dead unable to move, thin, with a lot of skin problems, dehydrated, and then step by step, we just improve their health, improve their lives, we, we get them to regain their, their uh, comfort and their, their trust in people, and this is actually the best feeling, and I think the, the feeling of, of gratitude is what keeps us going on. You know, we're grateful that we are we found our calling and that we are able to do this every single day and actually have an impact and rescue the ones that aren't able to rescue themselves. Okay, uh, so 250 dogs round about. We often have dogs leaving, dogs coming. It, we try to manage at 250. We will probably be raising this number in the future, but I think in spring because winter time is gonna be very hard and we will uh, focus all our resources, resources and all our people to um, caring for the dogs that we have now. Okay, um, how many hours per day we are at the shelter? That's another question. Uh, our uh, schedule is from 9 until 3 every single day. It's just 6 hours because we work every single day. Um, we get one day a week off. So we work six days with one week, uh, one day off, and nobody can say that at three, you know, they close everything and they just forget that dogs and cats exist in their lives because it's it's not normal. Everybody leaves from the shelter and then they have something else to do. They have to go home and care for dogs that they have um, in, or cats they have in uh, in foster, or they need to go and deworm and deflee a bunch of puppies that we found and that we've by a miracle find, found also a foster where they can stay. So it's, it's ongoing. Nobody gets home before five. That's the truth. So we start at eight when we leave home, we get at the shelter at nine, and then we work until five or six every single day. But it's worth it. I, I, I know that everybody who has ever come to Romania and have, have stayed three or four days, whenever they go back home, they are so tired and they're so emotionally drained and they're so physically drained because it's a lot of work. You get used to it by working every day and you, when you focus yourself only on the positive and the end result, then you don't focus on the suffering so much. But whoever isn't comfortable or who has, whoever hasn't been until now to the shelter, they are... Um, I laugh, but... It's really an emotional um, turnover and a roller coaster, and they're up and down, up and down. Everybody who has come from, from 
Western Europe to, to our shelter has cried. Everybody. <laughs> because, and it's not because that the dogs are, are in a bad condition. It's because you see so many dogs on the streets needing help. You know you can take only a few and you commit to those few, but your mind still lingers to the ones that you you've weren't able to rescue. So yeah, it's, it's an ongoing process. Uh, if, if right now we would have an emergency, we would probably do whatever we can to take that emergency, to take him to a vet, to solve it in a way, to make a difference.